Hi, Leo. Okay, Leo, we have the Four of Pentacles. And with the Four of Pentacles, there's a sense here that you are holding on. You are holding on to something. You may be holding on um, in terms of keeping an eye on your finances, on your money, on what you spend, on your investments that you feel that you're not in a position to do anything rash or impulsive and that you need to just kind of be in the status quo. There's a sense here of protecting what you have and there's a sense here of, you know, exerting control and, uh, you know, creating boundaries around what is yours. Perhaps this is not the weak to, again, to do anything out of the ordinary and per perhaps this is a week for you to focus on what you have and to be mindful about how you uh, spend and how you, you know, partition your finances and your resources, your time, your energy. But this is a sense that you're holding on, that you are hanging on. And here's another pen pentacles. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and this tells me that you are working hard. You are really working hard. You are focused on what you're doing. You're putting in the hours. You're putting in the energy. You are dedicated to your craft, and you have skills, and you're proud of what you do. And so, you know, this is a card of being very focused to the details of grinding it out to get the job done and to get the best job done. So perhaps, you know, this sense of holding on and keeping in the status quo and being mindful of what you have is because you're in work, work, work mode and you are getting things done. You might be taking trainings this week. You might be taking, you know, uh, having meetings, perhaps workshops, but there's a real sense of focus on the work that you do. And whether that work is your job or perhaps your hobbies, you know, sometimes people spend a lot of time working on their hobbies as well. If it, it's involved with sewing, that can be very extensive or photography, taking photos, editing them, posting them. Whew. So the good news is with all the work and the holding on, here we have some uh, watery emotional energy coming in. So the guidance for you is the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups is about the possibility and the potential of a really meaningful relationship, the possibility for a soulmate, for someone who connects with you on a very, very deep level where there's equality, where there's balance, where there's happiness and joy simply from being with someone else. Truly the possibility for this deep and powerful relationship. So whether you are already married or you're in a serious relationship, you may say, I've already got this and this can go toward deepening that relationship, making it stronger, building intimacy, rekindling passions, exploring passions, expressing how you feel, and perhaps taking it to another level. If you are single and hoping to connect, this is a possibility for you, a very real possibility that something is going to happen where you're going to meet someone who is really going to make a difference. You have to put yourself in position though to meet people. You know, that's the thing is that try to get involved, try to do things that you love doing, and then you're going to meet someone who maybe loves the same things. And there's that spark. There's that, uh, uh, that attraction. So do what you're passionate about and you may find the law of attraction speaks to you. So here we have the nine of cups. We have a card of feeling content, of feeling fulfilled, that our work and our efforts and what we've been doing, either if we've been showing a lot of discipline and focus has, is paying off. 
because we have this abundance of nine cups. This emotional uh, fulfillment here. Again, nine cups, it's a lot. It's a lot to be thankful for. So that's one perspective. The other thing to think about is the nine of cups is traditionally we think of it as a wish fulfillment card that if you make a wish that it will come true. And so if you are hoping for this relationship, set your intention, visualize what your partner looks like, visualize what your, the love of your life, how, what they would, uh, what their scent would be, how they would talk to you, the things that you would be doing together. I think there's a lot of power in that visualization and, you know, in the belief and the feeling satisfied with your life and now that you're ready for love and ready for something else, uh, this deep com connection coming. And again, the two of cups, for those that are not interested in dating, it can relate to your important relationships that you have. If they're platonic, you know, relationships are important. Um, romantic and platonic are, are they're important and they're, you know, it's what we have to pay attention to sometimes. So more emotional <laughs> balance and expression and opportunities, the King of Cups, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. This is a person who is a master of their emotions, who is, knows just the right balance to strike in terms of relationships in the giving, in the receiving, in the being sensitive. When I see the King of Cups, I often think of someone in the arts or in the uh, healing fields, someone who, a therapist perhaps, or someone who is very mindful of the human condition and of being compassionate and being thoughtful and being loving at the very core, rules fairly, going with the flow, you know, just kind of um, open and allowing the, the, the emotional component to come out within a relationship instead of withholding and holding tight, there's this sense of openness and being open and allowing emotions, whether they're positive or negative, if you're happy or sad, you know, expressing them. And so whether this is someone that you're working with, that you're involved with, that you're dating, that you meet someone like this, this is someone who is sensitive and feeling and caring and is a lovely energy to be around. And so the bounty of kings continues for you, Leo, the king of pentacles. Perhaps the King of Pentacles will resonate with some who are looking for st stability, looking for groundedness and practical energy, someone who is good with money, good with investments, good with doing a great job and being successful, uh, being in charge of things. You know, the King of Pentacles is this, I, I think it's a quiet determination, a lot of strength, not the flashiest of characters, but someone who you can count on to do the right thing and someone who enjoys the abundance and the comforts of life and is striving to create that and to build this foundation and this financial foundation and someone who can be of great benefit if you are having to watch your finances or your time or, or be thinking about how to improve them. He would be a great person to talk to. And if this is relating to those who are seeking love or dating, he's a straightforward, showing up on time, punctual, and a solid character. Someone who is grounded, um, practical, and successful, and puts in the hard work, like you, to get things accomplished, to make something. So we have this very clear energy. Gosh, 
of pentacles and cups. Of pentacles and cups. Water and earth. And wish fulfillment and the possibility for love, uh, soulmate, a deep, deep bond with someone else that is that brings you joy and makes you happy. So interesting, we don't see major arcana cards, we see we see our minors. Okay, so let's, you know what, let's just go to the love card. Let's see what love has in store for us. Or for you, Leo. Discernment. You are developing the skill to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion. So to discern is to use your critical thinking, your analysis, and to appreciate love when it's love and, um, you know, not being in a relationship because you're afraid to be alone. And dealing with the truth in a situation which is realizing that people are not perfect that there are positives and there, you know, we have weaknesses and we have strengths and at any time something can show through, but it's a matter of being forgiving and it's a matter of being understanding and it's coming from a place of love. Be discerning. And so now I'm going to choose a card for spirit or emotional self. Let's just fan them and we will pick a card. Daydream. You will more easily hear and receive our messages if you daydream regularly. Relax and open your mind to receiving without directing your thoughts. Just notice any feelings, visions, or ideas as if you were watching a movie. This is the seat of creativity. So with this daydreaming and this sense of letting go and receiving, I get a real strong sense here with the emotions of the cups of allowing yourself to feel, allowing yourself to visualize, of setting the intention, of wishing. There's no harm in a wish, you know? Wishes can come true. And so now, let, now let's choose a card for a focus area or a meditation point for the week. The spiral dancer, circuitous root and perception. The circuitous, I'm not even going to say it, the circuitous root the the it is at the infinity of life going round and round that we're constantly in cycles and in motion the wheel of life is that the root and it's the perception of, of how we see things and perception is so important in how we view the reality of our life of what we're doing well of what can be improved of what we can give more of. So Leo, I think this is a nice reading for you and I'm looking forward to hearing some comments. I wonder how many of you are, are in the process of finding someone or of deepening your relationships. And you know, I hope that you have a great week. If you found something that resonates here, please subscribe if you haven't already. Like, share, or comment. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good one.